work where humans come together, focus, and deliver results. That's how we work, social animals. We learn from the group how to behave, norms and rules, how to cooperate. As a biological species, we can't make it without the support of the group. We have a need to belong and to contribute. Today, we are office workers. Our money maker is the holy brain, production chamber of business thought. The goods that we offer to the market is high level intellectual brain power. And yet, still today at work, we are our senses and emotions mobilize our behavior for survival. We think we are so sophisticated. We think, think we're so rational. But wow, are we reacting right back to the level of our reptile brain? I've been through a few office moves and a few refurbishments during my career, and a few office planning meetings as well. And those are interesting manifestations of human instinct, all beautifully disguised as rational reasoning, of course. Here's what generally happens. The most popular desks are those in the corners, where your back is covered, and you have full visual overview of who comes near. It's the power spot. All managers that I've had have hogged that desk. With referral to their professional need for confidentiality, of course, nothing to do with predators from behind. The second most popular desks are those by the window. We craved natural light to regulate awareness and sleep. Coffee may seem like it does. The third most popular desks are those with some kind of semi-high structure behind it, such as a bookshelf. Same again, we want to cover our backs, literally. The least popular desks are those next to a, an office corridor or a busy area where potential in intruders constantly catch our visual, auditory and spatial attention. Now, research shows that when our brain is overwhelmed by all this sensory input, it's actually designed to divert its focus to, to that, rather than what we are employed to do, to focus on our intellectual performance. So, of course, it's important to build work buildings that are fit for human sensory design, and to serve great coffee, of course. But there is something else that is an even bigger threat to our ability to perform work. Mental health problems are now the biggest the number one reason for sick leave today. More than one third of all sick leave cases are due to mental health issues, and the dominating diagnosis are depression and burnout. Many of these are work-induced. To humans, the well-being of the group is essential. What holds the group together is the common good of the task, and to achieve it, everyone needs to be engaged. And that's an emotional thing. Sense of security. I'm valued by this group. A sense of autonomy. I'm trusted to take holistic decisions. A sense of mastery. Not opting for the quick fix solution. That's an insult to my intellectual performance and capacity. A sense of community, not commodity. And lastly, a sense of purpose, something that's bigger than ourselves. Deadlines, my friends, don't do it. Now, engagement doesn't just pass time and get things done in flow. For an individual, it is the best preventative against burnout. It doesn't give 100% uh, protection. We need regular booster injections to stay resilient. Acknowledgement that we are on the right track. Appreciation for what we contribute with. Appreciation for saying no when it's relevant for our sustainability and thereby the sustainability of the group. There's lots of research on the health-promoting aspects of living a life that's engaged in something. Aaron Antonovsky coined sense of coherence as a concept for health. Is my life 
comprehensible? Is it manageable? And lastly, is it meaningful? Meaning, is there a good reason? Is it worthwhile? Is there a purpose to care for? Out of these three, it's the third factor that is the most important one. It's the strongest predictor for health. And it's not just for extreme life situations. It's also valid for that everyday phenomenon we, that we experience as work. So back to burnout then. Let me state this loud and clear. Research on the etiology of this phenomenon is very clear. The most influential factors for burnout come from organization itself and the social relationships in it. So instead of casting blame and shame on the individual, let's look at the structures that we are part of at work, the relationships that we are part of at work, the stuff that we as individual workers and as humans are dependent on to do our task to contribute to the group. What happens when my framework is unclear, contradicting? What happens when relationships are about fear rather than cooperation? What happens to that protective engagement? It is time to see burnout for what it is. For a social animal, it's a perfectly normal response to an abnormal situation. When an individual burns out, it's actually a failure of the group. Now, the failure could be why we got organized in the first place, how we organized the work, and what consequences that has on my ability to live my work engagement. Work engagement starts already at the business idea. If your business idea is based on profits from stuff that we don't actually need, if your business idea is based on beating the competition rather than offering something good for us all, then for a human, there's actually nothing to engage in. We can no longer insist that we don't know the true cost of business as usual, as we know it. And we know that we are all partially guilty of the global damage that we're seeing. And we know how we financed it with work. So in light of that, is there purpose to my work? This connection with other humans is encoded in the coils of our DNA, meeting our needs without compromising the needs of others. But we were seduced by opportunities of profit from manufactured needs and bureaucracy for the purpose of what? Quarterly reports? Visions of superiority over the competition when our group is 7.3 billion? How non-human. We are at the point where the global perspective of work cannot be ignored. Or where the small individual perspective of work cannot be ignored. Not even for business. Work is where humans come together, focus and deliver results. But we need to switch focus. Switch to a human workplace where our sense of community is what can protect us from burnout of ourselves and the planet. That's how we work, really, as social animals. Let's focus on that. Thank you. <laughs>